How do you know what you know and who told you so? The Cultural Basis of Religion and Knowledge Part 5. There is a God Some people believe that the material universe is all there is. Others say the material universe gives us clues as to what the real and important things are, beyond. While still others conclude that the material universe is just an illusion. So, how do we know what to believe? Rene Descartes is credited with the famous observation, I think, therefore I am. From this baseline, he went on to define reality and to reason that there is a God. For Descartes, knowledge came through self-awareness, but I would like to take a step back from his argument. A common concept in his day was the phrase, man, the measure of all things. So that was a natural start, but beginning with mankind is a humanistic concept, which today is in an atheist corner. Something must be assumed in order to begin any logic. The fewer assumptions required, the more credible the logic becomes. Also, the first assumption should be as free as possible from being pigeonholed to any position on the assumption triangle, in order to be acceptable to the broadest range of thinkers. I attempt to explain my position from one assumption. I return to the more fundamental first phrase of Descartes and take a fresh start with a smaller step. I think, therefore there is thought. Never mind what that implies about me. All worldviews perceive a material universe, but to make yourself the point of all reference is like trying to stabilize a ship with the anchor still on board. By definition, a point of reference must be external to the measurer. I may think within myself, but principles by which I think must exist outside of me. I know this because others I communicate with have similar thoughts when they have similar experiences. They are basing their conclusions on the same external principles of logic that I am using. We didn't invent principles like A is not equal to non-A. We discovered them. They would be true even if we didn't know them or think them. Using logic, we have discovered many laws of physics and chemistry. We didn't invent these either. The material universe could not exist without them, but they would be true in concept even if there were no material universe in which to express them. In other words, not only do they exist, but also they are more fundamental than the material universe and could possibly lead to information beyond the material universe. They could have even existed before the material universe expressed them. This leads to an important question. Was it ever true that there was no material universe? In 1929, Edmund Hubble dropped a bombshell on the scientific community. His research at the new Carnegie Observatories demonstrated that not only was the universe far larger than anyone ever thought, not only are there myriads more galaxies than the Milky Way, but those galaxies are in clusters rapidly moving away from each other. The universe is expanding. Taking this to its logical prerequisite, there once was a time when the material universe actually started. Some scientists, unwilling to consider a universe that had a beginning, said, no, no, this cannot be. Perhaps as a ball tossed into the air gradually slows its ascent and eventually returns, the universe expansion is slowing so that it eventually collapses back down on itself, ready to do it again, forever. But ten years later, researchers demonstrated that the expansion of the universe is actually accelerating. It will never return again. Whether or not it started with a Big Bang, the material universe must have had an absolute beginning. Beginning. Action-reaction. There must be a cause for every effect, and that cause must be outside of itself. Therefore, the material universe has a cause outside of matter, energy, time, and space. One might well ask, did that cause have a cause? And that cause could have had a cause also, ad infinitum. No. Logic tells us that infinite regression is impossible, so ultimately there must be a cause that has no cause, and that would be the first cause. Now simply observing the material universe and drawing from the principles of logic and the laws of physics which we can test, what can we infer about this first creative cause? This cause would not only be creative, but it must have always been there. It is an eternal first cause. Let's consider just two other observable features of the material universe. These are its structure and its fine-tuning. Let's look at the structure of the universe first. Our experience with physical laws and logic give us four possible causes for structure. They are chance alone, rules alone, a combination of chance and rules, and mind. 
Pure chance results in no patterns whatsoever. This does not reflect the order and patterns we see in the material universe. Applying rules alone, as when bees all the same size work together molding holes in wax, with no thinking involved, a single pattern appears, repeated over and over. This does not represent the variety we see in our universe. But if we combine chance with rules, that is variation within boundaries, we get fractals. These yield patterns within patterns like this snowflake. These patterns appear in mathematics and in biology. But no matter how complex the rules, chance always, eventually, results in exact replicas of the pattern on multiple levels. This, too, is not what we find in the material universe. The structure of the atom with layers of interchangeable electrons is not repeated on the molecular level. The Earth is made up of molecules, but it is not structured like the molecules in atoms. Likewise, solar systems do not replicate planets. Spiral galaxies do not mimic solar systems. Nebula clusters do not replicate galaxies. And as we have recently discovered, the sponge structure of the supercluster is different from them all. The only cause ever identified that can bring together layer after layer of non-repeating patterns as one seamless coherent structure is mine. But unlike the world pictured by polytheists, where gods compete, our universe is seamless from one end to the other, showing one unified design, a clear indication that our universe is the product of one mind. So by simply looking at the material universe and its laws, we can not only infer that the cause of the universe is an eternal mind, but that it is one mind. And we have not even yet considered fine-tuning. In particular, let's consider some finely tuned constants. We have discovered many laws of physics that are simple to calculate. But in order to yield accurate answers, some equations must include constants. We know the exact value of these constants because we can measure and compute them quite precisely. As for why each has its particular value, we can find no material reason. But if they were off by only a little, the universe wouldn't work. Let's consider just one of these constants. What does it matter that the gravitational constant is set where it is? To get a picture of just how exact 10 to the minus 11th is, we need to consider a measurement on the scale of the universe itself. So, suppose we make a scale that spreads all the possibilities for gravitational constant across the 50 billion light year span of the universe. So let's suppose we mark off that scale in inches. That's about 2.5 centimeters per unit, and that's a whole lot of inches. And let's say the current force of gravity is about here. If we change the gravitational constant by just one inch, the force of gravity increases sevenfold. That means my mass, which currently weighs about 200 pounds, would weigh more like 1,400 pounds. I wouldn't even be able to peel myself off the ground, much less find and metabolize enough food to sustain my life. And that's not the only such delicately balanced constant. We have discovered dozens of them. And if any one of them were off just a little, there would be no molecules or perhaps molecules but no life, or perhaps life but no intelligent life, to the point that science has given the phenomena a name, the anthropic principle, that the universe appears to be fine-tuned for humans. These constants are built into the laws of physics, so it appears that this creative mind had us in mind from the beginning. So what is our conclusion? The best explanation which we can infer from the observable universe and the principles by which it works is that the universe began Therefore, there is a creative cause. The universe is uniquely ordered. Therefore, there is a mind behind it. And the universe is amazingly fine-tuned for us to be here. Therefore, there is a God.